Hey, my name is Eric, and today we are talking about the MiniMed 670G system from, and Dan, help me out here. Is this Medtronic that makes Medtronic, this? Medtronic, yeah, you got it. So usually I do reviews on this channel, and I do them by myself. And in this particular case, we're talking about this insulin pump, and I am not an expert whatsoever, but this is my brother, Dan, and he is an expert because I think we are talking about it before we hopped on here, Dan. You've been a type 1 diabetic for how long? Uh, about 37 years. Okay, so right now you're using the 670G system, is that correct? Yes, I've had it for uh, not quite a year yet. Okay, uh, what have you found about using the 670G that's different from like past things? Like what did you use before you got to this and what's the advantage for, if anybody's watching this and they're curious if it's worth, you know, hopping onto this? Sure, yeah, I've been with Medtronic uh, the whole time I've been on insulin pumps. I guess first and foremost, if you're still using shots, uh, if that's working perfectly for you, obviously, you know, don't mess with a good thing. But the reality is for, for me and for most diabetics, uh, an insulin pump can just mimic what a, a non-diabetic's pancreas does more automatically. So it's not riding these big up and downs overnight. You can kind of respond and dial it in. Uh, we can't do that with a shot. Um, so that's the first thing. And really functionally, how it compares to previous pumps, it, it, it has more bells and whistles, but the basics of how it works, uh, of how it responds to blood sugar and carbohydrates is basically the same, but it's got some new tools and toys, if you want to call them that, uh, kind of uh, works with a continuous glucose monitor where my old one did not. And the basic display is it's multicolor. It is a lot more visual. You've got uh, charts and graphs and things you can log that are just way easy to work with where the other one was almost so like a fancy clock the, as, yeah as far as like so say somebody is taking the shots right now so the advantage to them is like obviously you take a shot and it's you're getting a lot at once and then it's kind of dissipating so that's what you're talking about is more of a roller coaster kind of ride with your insulin and then this is kind of more like a drip feed if you need it kind of thing and it's just reacting to what you need in the moment or and forgive me because i'm a little bit more no, no, totally. probably than anybody even watching this video <laughs> not at all um yeah, basically what you're saying with insulin shots, uh, the way I did it, which frankly might be even done differently now because I've been on the pump for quite a few years, but I took two different kinds. One kind of worked like an arc that would last you throughout the day because you always need insulin working. There's never a time where you don't need energy coming into your cells because you're alive. Um, but then when you ate, you had to compensate for the amount of food you're taking in. Um, what this, but you still have that big curve that would be different in the middle than say when it's wearing off. What the insulin pump does is it gives you that constant amount, basically every few seconds, it's giving you like a tiny, tiny little droplet that your body then distributes, um, as well as gives you the larger amount when you take a lot of carbs in. Plus, which is pretty cool, with that old fashioned shot you would take where you ride that wave, well, let's say I take that at six in the morning and it's going to last 12 hours. Well, if at one o'clock, me and some buddies went on to play basketball, which could have been true 10 years ago, I don't know. Uh, I would be, you know, one o'clock having still a good amount of insulin working, but then being physically active makes that insulin uh, more effective and burns more glucose. So I, I would drop almost as a rule. I, I couldn't just keep playing or keep doing stuff because that insulin was already in me. Where now, if I wanted to, I, I actually did an Appalachian trail hike uh, in October for five days. Um, I can just dial that puppy way down and say, okay, give me 10% for the whole day. And it's just marching at that same kind of up and down, very small increment, but only 10% of normal because I'm exerting so much uh, energy trying to, trying to move. So that's pretty awesome. And that's kind of something you kind of learned how to dial it in based on your needs as you used it kind of thing? Oh, yeah, totally. You kind of, you kind of learn uh, how much you're exerting, um, how long you're going to be at it, and kind of what your risk tolerances are. For me, I think it's a whole lot less risky to dial it down a ton, so much so that maybe after I'm done exercising or doing something, maybe my blood sugar is a little bit high, but I can test and fix that and get it right back to normal. But if I get too low, that's where more of the risks are for most diabetics, myself included. So. Okay. Uh, what are the ongoing costs? So obviously you, you, you got the pump. Uh, did you get it through insurance or how did you get the uh, pump? Yeah, uh, twofold. Uh, my insurance did cover a lot of it. 
Uh, that wasn't always the case, but insulin pumps have become much more just kind of expected treatment um, mechanism. When the first ones came out, actually, mom and dad had to help out a lot with that because I, I couldn't bear the cost. I think it was, oh, like $7,000. You could get a decent used car for the price of a pump. They still cost, you know, upper fives, mid sixes. Um, but my insurance did cover most of that. Now, my copay was high and really... Mm -hmm. By God's grace, I was able to qualify for a grant that Medtronic has because we uh, were a single income family and uh, needed some help. So uh, we were able to qualify for that. So the actual out of pocket wasn't excruciating. For the grant, like, did you have to just go through their website to do that or how did that work? No, when you are first talking to the company, at least with Medtronic, they assign you, it's kind of like a diabetes educator. She's not a nurse. She's not a salesperson. She's kind of both <laughs> a little bit. Yeah. And uh, they were helping me walk through my needs, et cetera. And when the financial element did come up, uh, sent me the forms and filled it out. And actually they got back to me like in two days. So that was awesome. And that, ah, I'm terrible remembering numbers. I think it wasn't quite, maybe like $1,200 I saved. Um, I still had some out of pocket, but it helped cover a lot of the expense. Am I, I have decent insurance, but our copay or our deductible is pretty high. Um, so that helped me from having to hit that deductible all at once. Yeah. Yeah. I was actually kind of looking at different places to buy this online too. And I did notice a fluctuation in price. Um, but what we could do too is kind of link to some of those resources in the description below. Um, I don't know if, you know, obviously go with whatever's the best price, but I found one that was on totaldiabetesupply.com. It seemed like it was about $1,100 cheaper than a couple of the other sites. So it definitely seems like something that's worth kind of price shopping. So I do YouTube full time uh, and I'm actually teaching my brother Dan how to do it as well. So one of the things that we're going to be hooking him up with is if there is a paid affiliate link, it'll be marked a paid link in the description below. Um, but again, just go through and find the best possible price for you and yeah, maybe that means you got to go directly to Medtronic first and see if there's any grants that apply or anything like that. But uh, definitely a price shop because from what I'm seeing, it's about an $1,100 difference from one site to the next. Uh, one of the other interesting things too, just from researching the product, um, as of February 2nd, so pretty much five days ago as of recording this, they've stopped creating this at Medtronic. So when you go to look for it, it may be on a different website. Uh, so we were talking about it before the call, but it's kind of like buying a car, like the, the newer version, which is the uh, 770G, it's got some extra bells and whistles. I think, Dan, you said it kind of connects to an app kind of thing. Yeah, it can work through your cell phone. And the it's called the CGM, Continuous Glucose Monitor. Um, mm -hmm. That's a big feature. Mine can only read through my pump, and that's the display. You can get ones that uh, translate over to your cell phone. For me, honestly, that's cool, but that's a little bit more gimmick than actual benefit. So... I'm not. Did you say that because everything's already on the monitor that's on you all the time anyways? Yeah, what I need at this point, and to a fault, I like things pretty simple. So once I've yeah. kind of got it figured out, this thing's working. It's not high on my list of things I got to figure out right now and to have to figure out a new one that's going to be different, that's going to have more nuance. That's not something that excites me. Um, okay. And when I get, now the pump wears out. I mean, it's always, there's actually physically things moving to press the plunger, I guess you'd call it. Uh, as that wears out, you know, then I'll, of course, upgrade. But until then, I'm not just doing it for features. Okay. Um, as far as the plunger, like, how does that work to get that set up? Yeah, it's actually uh, pretty simple. The basic device is, it sounds crazy, but imagine like the slowest drill in the world. It's just this really tiny, tiny thing that twists and slowly uh, as it extends, uh, presses out the base of a small vial. Um, the basics of it is there's, there's a vial and tubing um, that you have to fill the vial with insulin from a bottle, same as you would taking shots. You fill that, it's good for about three days. You don't want to go too much longer than that because uh, insulin at room temperature can kind of uh, degrade, uh, but three days is very safe. So you fill it up, you put new tubing on and you have to move it to a new spot of your body uh, every three days or so. Gotcha. Okay. So as opposed to what you're doing back in the day, taking shots and moving around all constantly and having to constantly monitor things, this is really more so like dial it into what you think you're going to need that day and what you're doing. And then every three days you have to move the plunger um, that works that way. You know, the plunger is really on what's inside the pump. 
you have to change what's called the insert or more technically it's called a cannula. So you actually have a, and it's not metal, but a metal needle puts it in, but it leaves a, oh, I don't know, a little bit longer than a half inch, three quarters of an inch of very bendable tubing in your body, which is attached with a small, maybe half dollar sized uh, sticker. And that's okay. what moves every three days. And it's funny because like I listen to that and I'm like, oh, that sounds, you know, rough. And for you, you're like, oh, this is amazing. <laughs> this is so much fewer holes. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I was, I mean, for a while there, I was taking uh, at least four shots a day. Actually, for a while, it was five. I took one of the one in the morning, one at night, and then one at each meal. Um, and that did go to four. But yeah, uh, and the, honestly, one of the, this doesn't sound like <laughs> the best reason to get a pump, but I have a lot of meetings that I'll meet with folks at restaurants and stuff. I can sit down and I'll even do it right now. I'm sitting at a desk just so you can kind of get the idea. Uh, I used to have to, you know, have a whole insulin kit with me, which was a kit, a little lunchbox type thing. You probably remember it. <laughs> yep. um, and it was kind of cumbersome and there's no way you can really hide what you're doing. But right now yeah. I can go, just kind of look down, do, do. Let's imagine I'm going to eat I'll put in one gram of carb because that doesn't really matter that much. It's giving a tiny bit of insulin. So this is like when you say one gram of carb, like that's like I'm about to eat this much in carbs. Exactly. I, I just lied to my pump and told that I'm eating one gram of carbs and it correlates to how much insulin I need, which I am taking well, right now. We we couldn't actually see it. So, I mean, you could have just like pretended like you were hitting the button. I know, but I'm an honest person and maybe you heard the click on the mic. So, yeah, <laughs> but my point is like as long as that took is how long that would be be in a restaurant. I can look at my meal and be do 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 yeah. and I'm got, good to go and I can stay engaged in the conversation. I'm not running to the bathroom. I'm not having to take it in the car. And back then I took it in the car. A, you're leaving insulin in your car in the summer. That's never good. And B, you are also, you're really not sure what you're eating. So you can't really adjust exactly for your carbohydrates because you don't really know. And sometimes, you know, you go to different restaurants, different sizes, whatever. Now the plate comes out before you put the food in your mouth, you pump it in and you're good to go. Cool. Yeah. Um, what issues or anything that you would change about the device itself? Because I'm sure some people are looking at this and maybe thinking of other devices. Like what are the things that you think they, they could have done a little bit better job on? Yeah, well, the technology really is exploding. Obviously, there are a ton of diabetics. I think it's one of the sadly fastest growing uh, diseases in our country. Not so much type one, but type two. And if you have serious enough type two, uh, your treatment plan can be very similar to my own. Um, that's probably a different podcast or different <laughs> uh, yeah. video, but I could explain that at some point. Any case, um, they have ones where the actual insulin is preloaded in a device and the entire device, which is a bit smaller, uh, gets adhered right to your body and you just put a new device on. So they're almost getting disposable. Um, mm -hmm. So mine, mine's in my pocket and I've got about, I don't know, maybe two feet of hose that runs to my insert site. So that would be one way of making it a little bit easier. Um, of course, as the cell phone options and stuff do develop, that is attractive, you know, to be able to, more casually control things. I have to take an actual, people think it's a beeper, like I'm a doctor or something. <laughs> just kind of silly because- It's better they think you're a doctor. I feel like it's always a doctor, or, you know, drug dealer. So it's yeah, yeah, maybe I'm putting pimp. you in the yeah. doctor bucket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, oddly enough. So most yeah. folks are pretty shy. Like, is that a pager? I'm like, no, it's, a, and they have to explain. Um, yeah. So having one that is just directly adhered and replaced more regularly, I guess. How did the- how do the batteries work on it? Like, what's the battery life like? Um, I think it actually says only a week. My, I get much closer to 10 days. Uh, it runs on a double A. Uh, you just okay. open it with a quarter and pop it in, pop it out. And nowadays you get them from Amazon. I think I get like a, it's crazy, like a 64 pack or something ginormous. Because we, we burn through them pretty good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh, anything else that you would just let people know if they're kind of considering this device or any questions they might have, anything that pops in your mind? Yeah. Uh, as much as it's been good for me, I have talked to a few more diabetics uh, over the last year. And it does seem as though some are branching out into other brands. Medtronic was like the early leader. This would have been almost like 18 years ago. Uh, back in the, even the late 90s, they started 
Uh, I got mine, I think, in, yeah, maybe it was the late 90s or so. Any case, uh, Medtronic was kind of the, the only game in town, and I've been kind of loyal with that, but it does seem as though a lot of the brands are getting more and more competitive, and by virtue, some of the pricing options. And also, your upfront cost is a consideration, but don't forget, you're also paying for tubing and inserts, and the, the CGM, the glucose monitor, is, is a bit of a cost. So weigh all of those things and make a pretty widely informed decision. So it's in no way a regret of mine. I did just kind of stick with the brand I knew when they reached out to me because it was up for renewal. And I, I really didn't shop it out. I think as with everything, uh, it's a big investment. Your health is super important. I would encourage folks to look at the other major players in the market and make an informed decision because they're, they're really, really getting more competitive and wanting to get a piece of the market. All right, guys. And in this next video, we're going to actually walk through a tutorial of how to use this device specifically. And if you guys do want to subscribe to Dan's channel, that is going to be on the screen as well. And again, thank you for using his affiliate link in the description below. And we're going to catch you in the next video.